So when we talk about penetration, the number one factor you should consider is aeroflight. flight. This is video three, archery education. This is the penetration video here. I'm gonna apologize ahead of time. This video is gonna be long, lengthy, and a lot of math. I'm gonna try to make it as fun as we can, and we're gonna see where this goes. So when we talk about penetration, the first thing we need to talk about is arrow flight. How well your arrow performs as it's getting to the target is the biggest factor for how much penetration you're gonna get. And I don't think there's any disputing that. And what does this mean? Well, you really need perfect arrow flight. What is perfect arrow flight? That is the arrow following the flight path. And the flight path is based on the center of gravity of that arrow. And this is where front of center is gonna be talked about a lot as well. And that needs to be as perfect as you can get it. Any deviation from that and you're gonna lose energy. First, we're gonna talk about how you're gonna lose energy just from the drag alone. So the previous video in drag, we assumed that we had perfect arrow flight. What happens if we don't? For example, this case here, we've got a knock low arrow flight. And how much does that affect our energy downrange? Well, first it changes our coefficient of drag simply by the poor arrow flight. There's two, two methods actually. One is poor arrow flight and one is a weak shaft. You see a weak shaft arrow is gonna bend and flex a lot. If we have too weak of a shaft, we actually induce turbulent flow over the arrow. And that almost, almost doubles our coefficient of drag simply by having that weak spine oscillating through the air. It goes from a 1.5 coefficient of drag to a 2.6 right there. The next factor is deviation from perfect flight. Do you get over double the amount of drag just by a three degree offset of flight? So this is why perfect arrow flight is, is the most important factor you can have for retaining energy and getting more penetration. Not only that, but perfect arrow flight is gonna help you hit where you want, where you need to. It needs to be as perfect as you can make it. So here's some examples of how much energy you'd lose just by poor arrow flights. The first line here is just a weak shaft. Well, at 20 yards, you lose two and a quarter percent. At 60 yards, you lose eight and a half percent. With poor arrow flight, you lose anywhere from 5% at 20 yards to almost 13% at 60 yards by that bad arrow flight. Okay, so what about poor arrow flight when it hits an animal? This is for all those people who don't shoot broadheads, who don't verify that broadheads are hitting with field points, that kind of scenario. Your field points will lie to you. Because there's no drag on the front of the shaft, the fletching will correct bad arrow flight really quickly. However, as soon as you add broadheads, suddenly the fletchings have a tough time correcting really bad arrow flight. So you might get a situation like this where your field point was hitting perfect and suddenly maybe your broadhead is hitting high compared to your field point. Well, most of the time it's probably because you have a knock low arrow flight and that broadhead is hitting higher than the field point does. The fletchings are unable to correct the flight path. This is where momentum comes into play. See, momentum is a vector, and when we want to determine amount of energy available to penetrate in a situation like this where the shaft is off axis relative to flight path that the arrow is taking, you're going to get only a percentage of the energy, so you'd need to use the <clears throat> momentum to determine what percentage that would be. And you can see here, MV would be your momentum vector. The resistive force is at an angle to that. The arrow is still wanting to follow based on the center of gravity it's going to want to follow that flight path the dashed line but as soon as it hits the animal the broadhead now takes over the direction the arrow is going to travel but you would lose all of the energy that is not directed along that axis so now that we understand how important perfect arrow flight is let's take a look at just the penetration number, is there anything that we could do to estimate how much penetration an arrow would actually get? And we're gonna look at it first from two perspectives. Let's look at it from energy and momentum. First, we're gonna say that we have a constant resistive force. We wanna know, does energy matter or does momentum matter? So our two arrows is gonna be the 364 grain at 329 feet per second and the 507 grain at 279. Now we're gonna examine them both at launch so they have the same energy they do have different momentum which one will penetrate the target more the target we're going to say provides 
a constant 30 pound resistive force. From energy, that's pretty simple. That's just the energy divided by the force is equal to our change in distance. So that would be our penetration distance. That's equal to 2.92 feet for a constant 30 pound penetration target. Now, what about momentum? Momentum is equal to the force times the change in time. So we know our force, we know our momentum. We can then find our change in time. From our change in time, we could use a kinematic equation. We could find our change in distance. That equation looks like this. Notice that the slower arrow, which has more momentum, takes longer to stop. And that's what we'd expect. However, when you examine the distance traveled, no surprise, the penetration is exactly the same. 2.92 feet for both arrows. So what that tells us is, even if a different momentum existed, if the arrow's energy was the same, they would penetrate the same distance if the target provided the same resistive force. And that's the big question. Is the resistive force that an animal provides dependent on the arrow at all? What we did is we used an equation called the Poncelet equation. And this is a very well known formula for estimating the penetration of targets. So from this equation, there's two main factors that they consider the yield strength of the material. In this case, it would be the tissue, how much force is needed to cut the tissue. The second is force needed to move the mass of tissue out of the way. The penetration distance maximum can be estimated by this formula. Well, what do we get? Well, it turns out not as big of a difference as I expected. A 364 grain arrow at 20 yards if it was able to penetrate its maximum or deliver all of its energy to penetration, maybe somewhere in the yards of 33 inches, while the 667 grain arrow is 42 inches. The 507 grain arrow is 37. As we get to longer distances, for example, 60 yards, we see an increase in pe penetration relative to the lighter arrow. But again, I think arguably all these arrows could penetrate and kill an elk. 33 inches to 30 inches at 60 yards for the light arrow, 42 to 40 inches for the heavy arrow. So the question is, if all of these are capable of this much penetration, why do we not see that sometimes? And I think this has to do more with a factor of imperfect arrow flight, as well as some geometry constraints that occur with lighter arrows. And this is where we're gonna talk about front of center of the shaft. What are the effects of FOC on not only penetration, but arrow flight? In our next video, that's what we're gonna cover. And I think this is where our biggest loss of penetration might be coming from. When we've achieved, achieved everything else, we have a perfect arrow flight, we have a good broadhead, and we're still seeing losses of penetration in that light arrow system. I think it has to do with shaft buckling. You've all seen this when an arrow hits the target, the shaft wobbles. That's what I think is occurring when the broadhead hits the animal, killing your penetration. So I hope you guys like this video. Until next time, let's keep on rolling. All right, thanks. Bye.